Hello lovely stewards, how are you all this morning? I'm here in Toronto and the weather here is absolutely stunning. The sky is blue and we're sitting at 18 degrees which is a rarity for us. So we are all thrilled and excited here. And I hope you guys are all having a good day as well. Hey Ray! So, um, before I do anything else, Ray has told me that I should pin this post with my Instagram handle, so I shall do that right now. If you just bear with me for a second. The spring moon. Okay, let's see if I can figure out how to do this. Sorry, you guys, I'm just pinning this. Okay, it's done. Okay, great. So um, I just wanted to start off by introducing myself. My name is Farheen, and I live here in Toronto with my family, my husband, my uh, three kids. And um, I am a medical illustrator by profession. But a few years ago, I started uh, making jewelry. And uh, I'm working as a jewelry artist right now um, as a side hustle and uh, loving every moment of it. Um, so uh, I've been doing a number of craft shows and that's where I've been selling my stuff for the past um, few years. <laughs> I am an early bird, but it's not, I mean, 10 o'clock is, is a good time. I drop my kids off to school and then it's easier, easier to do a live in the morning and then I have the rest of the day to, to do other stuff. So, um, so yeah, so I've been uh, doing a lot of craft shows and so I was thinking I would uh, do a live and just share some of my experiences with craft shows um, with you and I'm also hoping that some of you will share your experiences with me and maybe I can pick up a few tips and tricks and figure out um, how to make my booth design a, a better than what it is right now. So what I've done here, what I have done here is, I'm just going to flip the screen. Okay, sorry, don't mind my chandelier. I got this from Seattle. Um, it's hand-blown blown glass, and we got it shipped over here. So, okay. Yes. <laughs> okay, so this is my booth. Um, so I just did like a mock booth setup. So, yeah, let me just get closer here. So, and uh, it's, I mean, it's not, as, it's not, it's very empty right now, it's not very full, but I just basically put the basic components that I would normally use in a booth, and I just thought I would go through the components one by one, and uh, see what you guys thought. Okay, so, so I'm going to start off with one of my go-to things that I always use in a booth are these risers. I don't know if any of, of you have used them. So um, they basically look like these little flower pots um, upside down. And um, the table just rests on them. So if you see the legs of the table, it just sits on them. And they're all on all four ends. It's over here as well. And um, they can take a fair bit of weight. They're actually furniture. They're, uh, they're called, uh, here, here's a box for them. So it's called extra tall bed lifts. And they're used to raise beds and furniture so you can store things underneath it. And some of them actually, even on the sides of them, have um, little outlets, electrical outlets. So you can uh, plug your lighting in and stuff. Um, I, I, don't, I didn't get that. I, di I didn't think that was that useful. Um, but nonetheless, what that does, these risers are great because it raises the entire table's height. So it's more at eye level. And, um, and it's, it's great because I, the goal of a booth is when a customer is walking in, right? And they're able to scan the entire, entire space your booth will already be at their eye level and it really stands out. And um, uh, so, so it's awesome if you can sort of raise the table as much as possible. And I, I don't know, I find it makes the whole table look grand. Like your whole booth sort of kind of looks kind of stately, you know, like it's sort of, and it rises above the, um, some of the other tables that are around. So um, I, I've, uh, I find that, um, find it helpful. Um, okay, the second thing, um, that I want to talk about is the tablecloth. Now, I personally think that there's nothing worse than having a tablecloth on your table with legs showing. I think it looks unprofessional, and it's important to have a tablecloth which goes all the way down the entire length of the uh, entire height of the table. Um, a frame built up to frame the table. What, what do you mean? What kind of a frame?
like you build a frame all around the table. Huh, that's kind of cool. I mean, if you can share a picture of that, that would be awesome. I'd, I'd love to see what that looks like. So, um, so, the, the, so the tablecloth, um, there are a few things to remember when getting a tablecloth. So I've used a material which is not 100% cotton, it's a mix. And I find that important because especially for um, like an outdoor show, when there's lots of wind blowing, you don't want the tablecloth to slip off or fly away. Uh, it needs to have a little bit of a weight to it. Also, if it's not 100% uh, cotton, it, it doesn't wrinkle the way mine is wrinkling right now. Mine is smooshed in a box. Um, so that's the reason it looks like that. But, but, um, if it is 100% cotton, you're gonna have, you're gonna see wrinkles all, all over the place. So, so it's nice to have a tablecloth, which is a mixed fabric and it has some weight to it. Um, you can buy these. I mean, on Amazon, but I've sewn mine just because my ta I've, I raised it because I raised the table by about seven inches off the ground. I needed to get a tablecloth which would cover all it all the way down. So um, I sewed mine, and it's pretty easy to sew. I mean, I basically um, so you for the width you measure the width of the table and the drop on both sides, so that gives you the length, and you do the same thing for the width. And see if you can get a double width cloth so you don't get a seam in the middle. So just ask for a cloth which is double width. And that's usually big enough that you won't get a seam in the middle when you, when you, sew, um, when you sew the cloth. Um, mm -hmm. What else? Um, yeah, so, so I would recommend getting a cloth which would fit a six foot, a foot, a six foot table because, um, so that'll be big enough, that's going to cover a four feet and an eight foot table, right? If you, because you don't want to build three, get three different tablecloths, one for a four foot, one for a six foot, one for an eight foot, those are the regular sizes in craft shows. So I would get something sort of in the middle for a six foot table and that tends to usually work for both. Um, okay, um, the, Next thing I wanted to talk about um, was signage. So, I mean, I got this sign made, which just goes in the front of my booth. I know some people have these long stand-up, freestanding signs at the back of their tables. I've never tried them. I always worry that I might trip over them and they're going to take up too much space behind the table. But um, I would love to hear back from some of you what, what you think, if you think that's it's a good idea to get something like that. Um, but I just have this one in the front. Right For now, I've just taped them. I do not recommend you tape them. This looks ugly. I just did that for now just because I was kind of lazy. So, um, But um, you can get these signs with grommets, like circular grommets in them. And then you can just use those grommets to put a piece of twine or something and hang the sign from your tablecloth. Um, so mine doesn't have grommets, so I just usually use straight pins, but um, I think I'm gonna get the sign redone because the pins are a pain and the sign keeps falling. So um, so yeah, but this is this is basically what my sign looks like. And um, But yeah, I'd love to hear what, what you guys think, if you, if you think a stand-up sign is better and if it adds more vertical height to the booth, um, if you think that's a good idea. Um, okay, um, lighting. So I uh, attended a workshop once uh, where they were talking about uh, just setting up booths and lighting, they basically said, is the key, one of the most important things that you uh, to work on for, for a booth. So um, basically what they said that if once you've decided how much lighting you need, basically double that number because, um, because lighting is just so important. So I got these little lamps from Ikea and they have these uh, bendable heads, and then I can sort of point it in whatever direction I want to. So if I want light on this little guy, I would do that. All right, point it down here. And I have found that wherever my light is pointing, that's the item that sells the most quickly. And I find that I'm always adjusting these lamps. And I have, I have about six of them on about a six foot table, and sometimes I find even that isn't enough. So right now I've just put up one, but, um, but yeah. And um, I hook them up. I basically use an extension cord, and I hook them up to this uh, little bar, and all of them um, plug into this bar, and then I just shove everything underneath my table at the back, underneath the tablecloth. Um, and uh, yeah, so and then this little extension thing is from IKEA as well. So it's it's fairly cheap, um, and these lamps are about nine nine dollars here in Canada. So, but yeah, I find they work great. Um, another option is, I mean, once you have these lamps, you're, you have to hook it into an electrical outlet, and so you're limited um, 
and you need like you need to be near a wall, right? But what if your booth is right in the middle? I mean, I, I've heard that people use battery packs. And um, here, somebody saying here, vertical height is dependent on your neighbors at the event. If they have a vertical height and you don't, you will disappear. Right. So, so I guess it is important then to raise your table as much as possible in case, <laughs> in case other people are are doing the same, eh? So, um, okay. What was it? What was I saying? Um, the yeah, the battery packs. So I've I've heard people using battery packs, and I've never used one. But but basically that does that that means that you're not limited just being near the table, right? You can be anywhere in the room, and your battery pack can you can also use it to charge your iPad if you're using Square or um, to charge your phone. So if anybody has any information of that, I I would be interested because I've been sort of debating whether I should sort of switch to a battery pack and 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 use that because I find that I always have to request that I'm near um, a wall somewhere, and that sometimes that's not always the best position. Sometimes they don't have the availability for that. And then I can't, I sometimes say no to a show just because I'm not able to get the, the electricity. So, okay. Um, okay, pricing. So the pricing needs to be right very, very big and very clear and right in the face of who, of all your customers. So I got, um, so, uh, it's, it's important because I found that people are shy and if they're walking by and they're looking at your stuff, they, they're not, and especially if you're busy with some other customers, they're not going to stop you and interrupt you and ask you what the price of an item's it, item is. They'll just walk by. And, um, I, I found that having the price right there, right in front of the item really makes, um, a lot of difference. Um, so I would highly recommend um, having the price in big bold letters right next to your products. Um, the last thing I want to talk about was having lots of vertical height. So um, I picked up this guy from Kijiji. Somebody was uh, selling a whole bunch of their wedding um, at centerpieces for ten dollars each, and I just picked a few of these up, and it adds a lot of height to my table, a lot of texture, and again, it all this having this variety in height makes the booth more interesting, visually, and also it again raises um, the entire booth so it's closer to um, to eye level. Um, Somebody said here, great point. I hate trying to find prices at shows. Yeah, I, I, I'm the same way. I, I never, like, I'll just sort of pass by, and um, if it's not there, then unless I totally love the piece, I'm not going to stop and ask for a price. So, um, okay. So, uh, so, and, and you know, to create the vertical height, I, 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 I wouldn't recommend spending too much money. I never do. All the stuff here is just basically stuff from my bathroom and from my kitchen. So, I mean, I don't know this this tray. I picked it up from Crate and Barrel. It was, uh, it's, I, I use it to serve sauces and stuff on. I'm just gonna move this. So, um, and, um, and then, you know, that, that's what I use it for. And then, you know, I pick it up from the kitchen and I just use it, uh, for my shows. And this mug that it's been sitting on, it's just a piece of pottery. It even has a, it's from the Goodwill store. It's got like $2 written on it. So, <laughs> so there you go. So, um, yeah. And then I just use that to, to kind of raise, raise the height of this. So this guy here is actually um, a soap dish from my bathroom, and I've, when my business cards look like this, they would sit comfortably within the soap dish. But now, as, and when I change my business cards, so now they look like this, I find that they, they don't look so nice, they're kind of small and the dish is kind of big, so what I ended up doing was I flipped it, and I just used like a little piece of like wood here, and then I put it like this. And now I display my business cards like this. I don't know. I think that looks kind of nice. So, um, what else? Um, even, so these trays as well, I have put a little piece of wood behind it, right? And I've tilted these trays upwards so they don't sit completely flat. Even the, in the packaging, even the boxes, normally they would sit like this. But again, I've, I've taken these out of the boxes and I've sort of tilted them. So everything is sort of facing, facing the people looking at at the stuff, right? Um, even this tray at the back is uh, is f like uh, for my oil. Like I put my oil bottles and stuff on it in the kitchen, so I just picked it up from there. So, so basically, I don't know. I wouldn't recommend spending too too much money on this. And as your booth evolves, you find you sort of develop a certain style, and um, and um, 
yeah, and and then you know you you can go ahead, and then you know eventually you can spend more money on your booth and actually get stuff custom built, but but for now, especially when you're starting off, just uh, just to grab things from home. Yeah, but 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 the, but the goal is yeah, Ray, you're you're right. Like if you, I've, I found I found that when, when things are lying flat, people will just pass by the booth and they won't even look. At anything, if it's, it's things have things have to hang right in front of their faces, right? Like even even this this centerpiece here. I mean, I'll hang all my pendants from from the branches. So so when people are passing by, they're basically hanging right in their face. So <laughs> there's no way they're they're gonna they're gonna miss them. Yeah, thanks. Yeah, the soap dishes. I it it worked out really well. Um, especially flipping it and stuff. My, my daughter did that. She was like sitting, uh, she was trying to figure out how to display them and she just flipped it and she said, oh, this looks pretty cool. So, <laughs> so that worked out well. Um, and you know what? That's pretty much all I had for you guys. I mean, I don't know. Do you guys, if you have any, any suggestions or any questions, I'd love to um, hear from you. You know, I've been a very absent member of the Stu community, so this is great for me to connect with everyone. Um, so yeah, so that that's pretty much it. I hope this was helpful, and um, I I hope you have a great rest of the day. Um, if nobody has any questions, I'm gonna go ahead and sign out the live. Okay, you guys, take care. Have a wonderful, wonderful day. I'm going to go outside and enjoy the sun. I we don't know how long it lasts here. Toronto is pretty fickle when it comes to nice weather. Take care and I shall see you soon, maybe at another time. Bye-bye.